and welcome to another entry in my Code With Me video series. My name is Eric Winklespecht, and in this particular series, we'll be working with test-driven development. For the first entry here, I want to talk about vTest. Uh, I have been using vt for getting all of my React applications up and running. I prefer it to create React app, which, uh, in my experience, create React app has been much slower and seems bloated. The file size is much bigger for when you get a project first up and running. Um, so working with test-driven development now and, and doing testing, I want to use vtest, which is uh, vt's testing library, right? It's, it is kind of just uh, like just, just like jest. If you've used jest at all, this is kind of a zero learning curve here. But I have been messing around over the past couple of days trying to get this set up in a way that is conducive to testing React applications. Uh, it took me a little while to find the appropriate setup that I wanted to utilize. So I like um, what Create React App comes with for testing, right? We've got the testing library, just DOM, testing library, React. I think I can skip user events because React has like fire events already. The, the way to get this set up and the reason I want just DOM is because it comes with things like, if uh, we look at a test that I have set up in here previously, it comes with things like to be visible. To be visible actually checks your, um, not, not just something that's in the document, but checks your CSS to make sure it's not hidden or have a, a zero uh, opacity or things like that. So when I was first trying to get vtest set up, I wasn't able to utilize the just DOM framework here, I guess, and it was a problem because I could do things like to be defined, but it isn't exactly what I wanted to test. So uh, it took me a little while to find the appropriate resources to get this set up the right way. So I thought I'd make a video to, to show the process because I think it's hard to come by uh, something this specific, at least right now. I wasn't able to find a video walkthrough. Plenty of documentation that had bits and pieces of this, but nothing that walked through the entire process start to finish. So there is a... Um, an example list for different setups provided by the VTest team. So I'll link to that in the description as well. The one that we're going to be utilizing here is uh, React Testing Library. So I'm not going to go through this piece by piece quite yet, um, but this does have file configurations that we're going to utilize in this. So what we'll do to get started is we are just going to, we're going to install VT and then we'll install VTest and then all the other um, pieces that we need here. So npm create beat at latest. And this is going to give us a little walkthrough that we can go through. We're going to name our project. We're just going to call this video tut for tutorial. And you see, we've got a bunch of different options here. If we want to do vanilla, JavaScript, view, react, preact, uh, svelte, and there's others in here too. So we're going with react and we're going to go with react with TypeScript. And now we're going to cd into our new folder and install the packages that we just downloaded here. So if we open up the getting started documentation on vtest, uh, they have pretty extensive documentation here, but I didn't see a specific walkthrough of exactly what I was looking for. So we can see we've got the basic install commands here. So let's minimize some of this stuff. Here's our new folder. We can close the things we don't need here in our video tutorial now we've got our package.json just our basic starting so we are going to npm i dash capital d for dev dependency vtest and once that finishes installing we're going to add the script for it here a test and vtest easy enough and now we're going to install uh, three more things we're going to install js dom we're going to install testing library React and testing library just DOM. Again, with capital D for your dev dependency. We should be able to install all three of those at once. Okay. And now here in our dev dependencies, we have testing library just DOM, testing library React, and JS DOM. So we're good to go on that. So now the first thing I want to do, we have this vt config file here. We're going to open this up. 
and this is this comes when we do the Vite install originally, we're going to add some additional things in here. And let's go back to the example list, right? So we can go to their config file. And this, this part's also in the documentation that we need, even though the documentation only lists this top triple slash line, we do need both of them according to this reference. And I've, I've been working with it. It seems like both are, are needed. And then within our define config here, we are going to put some of this stuff in, right? So we'll do this part in a minute, but we want to add the test object here. And we are going to do globals true, which what that's going to do for us is um, we won't need to import things like it or describe or test if you want to use test instead of it. Uh, we won't need to import that in all of our test files. We'll list the environment as JS DOM because we are testing some web application stuff here. Uh, I think it defaults to Node.js. And we want to do CSS to true. Otherwise, this isn't going to parse your, your CSS files. So things like, did it again. So things like uh, to be visible won't necessarily work because that's testing some CSS uh, in, in the whole process. And at this point, along with setting globals as true here, we are instructed that we need to go into our tsconfig.json file. And we also need to add here types and in brackets or in uh, square brackets, we're putting in vtest and globals. So now that we have our globals declared, we could at this point go through and create a test file and we would need to import from testing library react. We need to input import render and screen. And then we'd also need to import the component where they're going to test. So in this case, we'll just do app. And we won't need to import it or test or, you know, whatever, whatever we're using there. So we can write an example test here. It, you know, we could say it should have hello world. And in our function and then our actual test function, right? So here we can render our app and we could find, let's say message should equal screen because we have screen now. And if we do something like query by, do query by text and we'll use regular expression <clears throat> and we'll say hello world. Now at this point, we have expect, we can use that and message. But this is the part that I was having challenges with. So we've got some options here to choose from. And to be defined might work in some cases, right? Just to say that it is present. But it's not actually the one that I want to use, especially if I'm building out some components. Uh, to be visible is something I'm going to want to have because potentially what if there's, you know, uh, an instance when it should not be visible or what if I make some changes in the CSS and that changes something and I make mistakes there, right? So rather than use to be defined, I want to continue our setup process so we can use to be visible. So in order to do that, we actually need to make a new file, right? So we've got all of this done except for this setup file, right? Which we kind of passed over a few minutes ago. So let's go back to our uh, Vite config file. Now we're going to list a setup file. And this they have in a test folder. We'll copy that just to follow suit. You could put this anywhere as long as you're linking to it correctly. So we'll make a test folder. And in that test folder, we're going to make setup.ts. And if we go back and we look at their setup.ts, which is in source, in test, in setup.ts, the only thing that's in here is import testing library just DOM. So I found a lot of things that said something about importing the matchers and extending the vtest. So we can do that, which maybe you'll see that somewhere as well. Um, I wasn't able to get it to work in the config file. If we go to our actual test, a lot of things that I saw said import matchers from 
testing library just dom and then expect dot extend and matchers and this would also work as long as you remember to have that css flag enabled in your config file but since we're doing our test file we don't need to do that import here and now if we go back and we look at our available methods here i should be able to scroll through and find to be visible now that's available for us and here we go we see to be visible does not have css property display set to none doesn't have css property visible set to hidden or collapse things like that right so that's important to me and i've gone through in my app.tsx file and i've cleared out everything except for this div so if i go through and i do npm run test this should give us a failure now there we go we failed we have one failing test and it says receive value must be an HTML or SVG element. It says to be visible. So should have hello world. We see we failed this test, right? So now if I go back into our app.tsx and let's make this an H1 just so we can select it more easily. Well, well, we'll select it with that in a second. And if I just do hello world here, I save. This is going to run this test again. And now we're passing, which is great. And we can check this again. Here we're importing app CSS, right? So if we go into app CSS, and if we select the H1 that we just made and we set display to none, if we save that again, now we should be failing again. There we are, because this is parsing our CSS and is ensuring us that visible is working as we expect it to work. So hopefully this helps if you're setting up VTest the same way to test your React applications. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments or your experience with test-driven development. In the next episode, we will actually look at the project we're going to work on. We'll talk about some ideas we already have for setting it up, and we'll dive into the world of test-driven development. Thank you for joining. We'll see you next time.